Welcome to uh, Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I am your preacher for today. Uh, my name is Latu Paya. I am uh, also the, the pastor of this congregation. I almost forgot. So, uh, <laughs> if you could find your blue registration cards that were handed to you with your bulletin, uh, please fill them out and drop it in the basket at, at the exit door uh, in your pew or where you're sitting at. Uh, there are white cards uh, titled prayer and praise cards. If you have a prayer or praise you want to share with the congregation today, please write them down and turn them into me during the birthday hour, birthday bank hour. Uh, so before we sing our song of gathering today, uh, it is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to winter and when snow is coming. Uh, I hope you have your snow blowers ready because I'm not shoveling nothing this year. Um, please greet your neighbor right next to you. Tell him that uh, God is good. Good morning and I'm glad to see you today. I'm glad to see you today. <laughs> morning. <laughs> Get this in order. As we center ourselves for worship, I would like to ask the congregation to please stand if you are able as we sing the song of gathering. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for a beautiful week in Carson Valley. Let us pray for peace in the rest of the world and that our leaders will guide us wisely. Help us to have an open mind so that your words may speak volumes to our hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, please be seated. For our children's message, we have Nancy and her puppet friend. Hi, guys. Hi. How you doing? Hi. 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 How you doing? Oh, boy. It's not my name. It's Bob. My oh, bad. the things I have to put up with. Well, you know, Bob, I haven't seen you here in, in quite a while. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because I finished my training. Your, your training? Well, yeah. You know, um, my faith in Jesus. I'm all done. I checked all the boxes. 
what foxes? What are you talking about? Well, you know, I came to church, and uh, let's see. So I know God loves me, and Jesus died on the cross and rose three days later and defeated death, and I'm forgiven because of God's grace. So that's it. I think I'll find something else to do, like maybe knitting. I mean, I carry my own wool. <laughs> You're a real character, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, boy, I, th I think you've kind of got it wrong. Um, faith isn't something you're just, you know, finish and you're done with. It, I mean, we're always supposed to be growing and building our faith. Uh, you know, it's, it's like construction. Um, you you got to have a good foundation. So um, do you remember what you first learned when you first came to church? Oh, yeah, I learned a song. Jesus loved, okay, okay, I get it. Anyway, and then what? Some, some stories from the Bible, like um, David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den, and then all those stories that Jesus told. You mean the parables? Oh, yeah, the parables. So you know all about Jesus? Oh, yeah. So you've read the whole Bible? What? <laughs> Have you seen how many pages are in that book? and there aren't any pictures. <laughs> so there might be some more you could learn. Well, because what we can do to grow our faith, we need to listen to Christian teachers, we need to read the Bible, we need to pray, we need to serve others so we can be more like Jesus. And, and it's not something we're ever done with. We're, we're always under construction. Oh. So I guess it's a good thing I came today so I can keep building my faith. That's right. Let's pray. Loving God, help us to continue to build our faith, to increase our understanding of you and our love for others. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, okay. I'm not going to be in the choir's way. Okay. Um, e every week we uh, highlight uh, a time in our life, whether it's a birthday or anniversary, and uh, we donate it into this birthday bank. Uh, it helps children around the world. Uh, one of the highlights uh, that I wanted to share was my alma mater won yesterday against Utah State. And so, since right here, I got it, I got it. So, if you have a highlight in your life besides that win yesterday, and uh, or anything that ha that has brought uh, uh, happiness to your life. Uh, please come forward uh, and come as you are. Hi, Cricket. Hi. So on September 21st, I got married. Ooh. And in a couple of days will be Kate's birthday. Hey, Ooh. happy birthday, Kate. Thank you. And congratulations. Mm. Mm. On Sunday, I'll find kids at a Chili Cook Off in Montego. The team sold um, bakery gifts, made $277. And we put up a donation box uh, for the family outings and we collected $311. Nice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Applause. 50 years of, of, of a marriage. Um, oh, well, you kind of started on the marriage part, but, uh, but it's okay. Your wife said wedded bliss. Congratulations. and it was a very successful evening for our kids. Yes. I got two parts. It's uh, my brother's birthday, mm -hmm. and uh, the other great part, he's here as a guest, Patrick Moss and his wife, Julie. Hello, Patrick. Hi, Hi Julie. Welcome. Yes. Well, my alma mater won also, mm. but this is actually for my anniversary. <laughs> what was that? Who was your alma mater? Iowa. Okay, sounds good. You, 
you're safe. Okay. <laughs> I don't have enough money to put in for my alma mater, Ohio State. <laughs> but this is for uh, my anniversary, 46 years today. Yay. All right. How do you do it? How do you do it? Yeah. Yes, dear. We've that over and over again. That's for Lance. He's, yeah. he's down here. Oh. But oh, it's getting pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Happy birthday. Uh, um, mine is my husband's birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, also to have the opportunity to fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. My sister-in-law, who is a new member of uh, Carson Valley, is visiting us for the first time today, Debbie Scott. Hi, Debbie. I have two things. For those paying attention, for my birthday this Tuesday, I did put the check in at the first service, okay? <laughs> then also, um, just to say that people watching us online are really paying attention to us. Yes, we had one comment that the green dress up there, the parapet, Pyramid is often crooked because of somebody's laptop shifting around. Thank you, Martha Hafner. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. <laughs> oh. At least you'll be going with the correct car today. <laughs> I'd like your permission, church, to say prayers. Please say aye. aye. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, we thank you for your provision. Uh, you instilled happiness that's uh, wor it's worth more than gold. And so uh, you have given us a place to, to live, uh, food to eat, water to drink, and people that love us, and also a church that embraces us just for who we are. And so, Lord, we thank you for those provisions. We thank you for the provisions today, yesterday, and also in the future. And we always say God is good all the time. And so, Lord, we ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, we are going into the tithes and offerings uh, portion. Uh, for those that are new here, we do not pass the basket around, but we do offer a portion of our talents. Uh, and so today's offertory is going to be performed by my one and only Losa Faya. And she'll be singing a song called, uh, a Tongan saying, Fuaki Kakato, or to give all.
Thank you, Losa. Your voice is a gift. Please stand if you're able for the prayer. O oh Lord, thank you for leading us to this sacred space and for the energy and kindness of our congregation. We are thankful for your love, which encourages us to be open-minded, and we pray for your guidance in every choice we make. We ask this in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we are going into the portion that we call Prayer and Praises, and I will be reading uh, the prayers and praises that have been submitted to me. Uh, so when I read the prayers first, I ask the congregation, please respond with, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, and after that, I ask the congregation, after I have read the praises, to please respond with, we thank you, Lord. I'd like to ask uh, Gwen if she would please play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds. Our first prayer is a uh, prayers for Cousin Doyle ha uh, Haslam, who fell off a ladder and had to have a neck surgery. Uh, prayers for the McDowells, uh, for Bob McDowell as he goes to rehab at Prestige Care. Uh, her, his wife, Linda, is hoping that the dialysis clinic will give them a schedule uh, when Bob would be transported to the clinic. So the prayers are uh, for that process of transportation. Currently, the seats are full, um, and uh, it might be that Linda would have to uh, transport and pick up Bob uh, during uh, the, the dialysis treatment. Uh, prayers from George Wenhold for a Mike and Tina jo Johal. It is a, uh, this is part of a prayer chain, it is for Mike that is going to have a surgical installation of a de defibrillator in him. And also uh, prayers for both of them uh, for, the, for the death uh, and passing of their son. Uh, these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, for our praises. Uh, praises, uh, praise for Gwen Marsh for her amazing music. We, we will miss her as she heads south for winter after next Sunday. Uh, we have a praise uh, for God delivering us safely. So it's from Nancy, Nancy Dice. Praise for God delivering us safely from the desert on our recent Jeep trip. Uh, praise, thanks be to God for good medical results. And I have, oh, another praise. Another praise? Oh, that was a note for me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Since I'm ahead, already ahead, up, ahead. I do have two praises I neglected to put on a praise card. Uh, first and foremost, our council meeting yesterday morning, we even took a break to go out and look at the uh, eclipse. We still got the meeting done in an hour and five minutes. Following the meeting, we're heading out to the parking lot. Uh-huh, he knows it's coming. Yeah. I was carrying little Tony, and Latou usually parks in the same spot every time, and I went out, and I started getting in the wrong car. <laughs> he stopped me, and he's such a humble and soft soul. He did stop laughing by the time we got home. <laughs> oh. The things you do as a pastor. Okay. 
I have a, I have a last praise. Um, I am uh, I I received a great soul today. Um, his name is Robert. So uh, Robert is is my new. Is, he's the same age as me. He he's been he's somewhere around here. He's came in the first service, but I am uh, he is uh, trying to understand God, uh, and so he is my uh, day to day uh, conversation, and. Uh, I, I hope that I am memorizing correctly with him. So, um, yes, and this is a praise that he's happy to be here. Um, these are our praises. I'd like to ask the congregation to please stand, if you are able, as we sing the Lord's Prayer. seated church. Uh, we are going uh, towards an anthem uh, that is prepared by Tammy and our choir here today. It is, uh, the title of today's anthem is Lord, Here Am I.
Please stand, if you're able, for the scripture reading. The scripture this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them and formed it in a mold and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn away from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, who you, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Now, before I start, I gotta make this cloth all straighten up. I was gonna come over and do it. Oh yeah. Uh, I'd like to go, uh, give acknowledgement to God in our midst, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
uh, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge this holy sanctuary. I'd like to acknowledge church staff, church volunteers, church members, and also friends who join us online via YouTube for today's service. I'd like to acknowledge uh, youth members and the children of uh, Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I'd like to acknowledge friends and visitors. Uh, welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. We are humbled that you are here today. It is my privilege and honor, uh, church family, to preach the word of God, of Jesus Christ in your presence today. Uh, praise be to God, uh, for whom all blessings flow. Who would have known that you and I would survive it today? Uh, tomorrow is, is never guaranteed. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing to be alive. And praise God for all his blessings flow. My sermon scripture today is from today's passage that has been read to you. The book, the second book uh, of the Pentateuch, which is authored by the patriarch Moses, called Exodus. Uh, chapter 32, verse 1 through 14. Uh, my sermon scripture today is Exodus chapter 32, verse 9. And this is how it's read. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. How stiff-necked they are. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. And my theme for today, I'd like to look, I'll have you guys look at your neighbor. Please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor. When, your when your faith is under, under. construction. <laughs> All right. Just making sure everyone had their coffee today. <laughs> In my younger years, I had a cousin named Sam uh, who was going in and out of the juvenile detention center during the middle, our middle school years. As we departed ways in our teens, I attended a high school in Utah. And from conversations with family members and my other cousins, they told me he was being sent to a youth authority a corrections at an early age of 16. As I got into my adult life, I met, him, I met him at a family reunion in the Bay Area, and being a career criminal, Sam was one of the most feared men in the East Bay neighborhoods. One night, as we were eating at the family luncheon during the reunion, him and myself and his oldest brother, who is now a pastor now, uh, tried to speak to him in order uh, to, to stay out of trouble, but it was not going to work. I kept trying to keep in contact with him, but the street life was, in Sam's word, it is my sanctuary. Today on his second strike, he is constantly in situations of trouble, putting his family in danger while trying to progress his life, but he cannot resist. My last visit with him was before I was appointed here. I had uh, permission from him if I could use his story um, in my sermon if it was a subject that was related to this topic. He knows the consequences, but it is his ignorance and arrogance that draws him to a toxic community of mischief. I pray for his family and also for my cousin uh, to settle down, for we are both approaching a age of 38. We are not 18 anymore. But you can only do so much as you get wiser. In our theme of this month, titled For the Long Haul, we learned that our decisions in life, in today's scripture, that our decisions in life can deter our relationship with God or maintain it. Today's scripture passage uh, if you've read it, or if you have seen it, or if you've seen uh, the movie, The Ten Commandments, uh, it is called The Golden Calf. Uh, this title is familiar to all Bible readers because it explains the inappropriate behavior of Israel. As we learned from last week's sermon of The Ten Commandments, our location is still at Mount Sinai in the, in the wilderness. Our situation in today's scripture uh, is that Moses has been up in Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, as referred in Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. And now the Israelites are impatient. 
They are grumpy. They've been waiting over 40 days. And there is still no Moses. So the Israelites believe that Moses has disappeared or vanished. So they decide to ask Moses' brother, Aaron, to make a God to worship with all of their earrings and gold rings. They make a golden calf. Now, with all the good deeds the Lord has done for them, with all the provision that we've heard about, their feeding, the, the bringing water onto them. If, you've, if you are in my Bible study, we have discussed the provisions that God has done for Israel through this time. With all the provision that God has provided, they still have disrespected God by worshiping the gods they once worshipped in the land of Egypt. The gods that never freed them. The gods that never fed them. The gods that never cared and protected them. In verses 1 through 2, the people come to Aaron and demand him to make a god out of gold. In verses 3 to 6, Aaron makes an idol, uh, which is a calf, out of gold. Verses 7 to 10, God announces to Moses that the people he led out of Egypt have corrupted themselves, in which God says in verse 9, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. And this is our key verse for today, church family. Verses 11 to 13, God wants to punish Israel. He wants to incinerate them in fire. But Moses implores during this dialogue with God, in which verse 14 says, The Lord decides not to punish Israel, with his wrath. Lucky Israel. Lucky, lucky, lucky. As indicated in our verse today is Exodus chapter 32, verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. I like to divide my sermon into two parts. Number one, stiff-necked faith. Number two, humble faith. In the historical background of today's story, one thing that stands out in learning about Israel during the Old Testament period is their arrogance. From crossing the Red Sea to eating manna in the wilderness and from getting consecrated to receiving the Ten Commandments, Israel continues to struggle to have faith in God. What more does God have to prove? While Moses was in the mountain of God, Israel turns around and makes an idol that they deem appropriate to worship. God calls Israel a name that is in today's sermon scripture called stiff-necked. In the Hebrew language is kashesh, which means to be cruel, to be difficult, to be stubborn, to be hard or obstinate. Israel's stubbornness reminds God of how ungrateful they are, even though he has provided for them during this time of transition. They make an idol. Think about that. Someone that goes to bat for you or someone who has done a favor for you. Your loyalty is given to someone else. While God is present, his provision is unquestionable. That is, when we read it, you, it is an impressive resume if that was to be compared. God has fed them, clothed them, sheltered them, protected them. And there are still people in this encampment who still question God and Moses in the wilderness. Stiff-necked is what God calls them, in which we would define this community as, they just don't get it. <laughs> My church family, have you ever experienced someone in your family or close friends that just ruins a situation or says something that kills the vibe of the party. You have a friend that does something but ends up burning bridges in that friend circle. Have you ever had a not again moment? Have you ever questioned someone or something that ever happened saying, are you serious? This is that moment. As the wheels are turning for Israel, God is preparing Moses and his people to be guided into the promised land. It is assured that God provided and sheltered this community, 
but in the midst of moving towards the objective of going into the promised land, there is a major setback. They decide to make a golden calf. The golden calf, my church family, is a symbol of human arrogance. Stiff-necked in ancient Hebrew culture. It is not instilled just in the Hebrew people. It is instilled with human beings. The calf was an animal of fertility, but in today's scripture, it reminds us the golden calf is the symbol of absolute arrogance towards God, always challenging God, always questioning God, not looking at the blessings that you already have, always complaining over little things. It is a perspective that one's self-importance or value is more valuable than the majority. The golden calf is the ugliness of the human heart that challenges God. The golden calf is not made out of faith. It is made out of human hands. It is worship of the flesh. Life in the flesh is life in wickedness. It is the face of evil. Evil is the new norm today, my church family. The Bible says a worthless person is a wicked man who goes out with crooked speech, winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, points with his finger, with perverted heart, and devises evil continually, sowing discord. It is people that like drama. It likes problems. It makes things uncomfortable. We have people who have sown the golden calf in their hearts today, people that still believe Human genocide is the correct execution. People that believe we should, we should sit in segregation, go back, to, go back in time. People that have declined the presence of prayer in public spaces. We have an increasing rise in atheism and, and a decline in our church membership today. Violence is the new trend. Human exploitation is at an all-time high. And our children's education is at stake. The golden calf is still here. We are still stiff-necked people. This is what I call stiff-necked faith. It is faith in one's arrogance. Faith in one's arrogance is what faith in the flesh described in the Bible saying, now the works of the flesh are evident, and here are the works of the flesh that are evident, sexual immorality, Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, etc., etc., etc. Still, stiff-necked faith knows no love. It knows no mercy. It knows no unity. It knows no God. The golden calf is its symbol, and their worship is the performance of human thoughts. The only difference is stiff neckedness is what I call it. Cannot please God. Therefore, it will not experience eternal life, but eternal death. Church family, do you have people in your life that still raise the golden calf in God's presence today? Do you surround yourself around a community that worships this type of idol? Are there people you know who challenge God? Do you surround yourself around the presence of the golden calf. Have you ever worshipped the golden calf or had arrogance in your soul towards God? This leads me to my second part, humble faith. Today's psalmist describes the only way to combat and conquer the golden calf in ourselves and society is praising the Lord with happiness for his steadfast love which endures forever. The Bible tells us that Jesus spoke these words, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We ourselves have the golden calf in our hearts in which we struggle in our own sins, relying on our own understanding. John Wesley preached that grace is available to all who respond to God's presence. Faith in Jesus Christ is the only person 
who is able to eliminate the golden calf and also eliminate our arrogance, eliminating our hate, eliminating our jealousy, eliminating our corrupted behavior, and also eliminating our ugliness. In each of our lives, we are always in a time in which our faith is constantly questioned. We ourselves have made some decisions in life that went against God's laws or will in which we knew that just as the Israelites did, the difference between right or wrong. Sometimes our arrogance can overshadow our humility. My church family, break down your calves. Break down your golden calves that are present. Deconstruct your stiff neck with the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is the symbol of salvation. The cross is the foundation to eternal life. It is not built on self-importance or given to a specific type of people. The cross was a gift for all who accept Jesus Christ. Men, women, it is, it is, the cross is a gift for all. It is not judged on your gender or your sexuality or ethnic background. Those who respond to the grace of God, the cross is available for you. It is not faith by the works of the flesh. It is faith in the spirit. John Wesley preached saying, he, is, he that is by faith born of God sinneth not by any habitual sin. But sin can not reign in any that believeth. Now, if you have noticed uh, in our context, in our community today, uh, my, 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 my staff and I, and also my boss, uh, Len Fru, uh, we, we take, a, we take a, a brief lunch going towards either Katie's or Minami in Delhi, and there's always these uh, construction signs uh, from the Main Street Gardnerville to a certain portion of Minden, and, uh, and so traffic is backed up, and we try to avoid that by going on County Road and taking the shortcuts, and I'm learning all the shortcuts because I'm a newbie. So, the signs in these, where the traffic's backed up, it says detour, road work ahead. Uh, and also, there's an electric arrow that everyone hates seeing because it points towards the one lane and everyone is just trying to cut each other off so that they can go into the lane. The road work reminds us that, that there are certain areas in our community that needs reconstruction. It is like our faith. Sometimes... You have to tell your friends or family members to back up a little bit. Uh, sometimes you have to spend a little bit of more me time uh, to get reconstructed. Sometimes you have to block your social media, turn off your phone, actually say no. Sometimes when we are reconstructing our hearts, there's another reconstruction down, down the road which is on our mind and soul. Uh, my church family, the workers on our faith, it is not a golden calf or an idol made by hand. It is not done by a special prophet or your special baptism to a church. Uh, your, your faith, when your faith is under construction, uh, there's only one person that knows your weakness and knows your vulnerability. The workers are sent by God. The one that created you and knew who you were in your mother's womb and knows the date when you will leave this place. Or God himself will work on you. We are growing day by day, trying to reach Christian perfection. Now, Christian per perfection is, is not a word to being perfect. It is a word that your, that your heart, mind, and soul is filled with God's everlasting love. We are growing day by day. God um, is trying to to pull us towards the sanctification of grace. We make mistakes. We have fallen short. Or in our Bible study, we always say, there are times that we ended up on the porch of our faith. And we have made some unwise decisions that have probably deemed us unworthy. But church family, thanks be to Jesus Christ for his profound love that he took our sins to the cross so that we may have a chance of eternal life. This is the beauty of Methodism. This is doctrinal, biblical, and theological. When your faith is under construction, the Methodist hymnal says this, and everyone knows this hymn that has been in a Methodist church. 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you, um, Carson Valley United Methodist Church. We've done so much in my time that I've been here, and I'm pretty sure as in, when the previous pastor, Pastor Tony, was in here, there's a lot of work that has been accomplished here. God bless you. I, th I thank you from the bottom of my heart after we've had church council and, and also had our dialogue uh, of uh, who can go into the correct car at the end of our meeting. Um, <laughs> Never forget that we are, we are growing every day as disciples of Christ in the long haul journey of life. There is no such thing as perfect. Even I, as a pastor, make mistakes. Make room for God to be in your life. Conquer the golden calf, which continues to grow in our communities, continues to grow in our families, continues to grow around us. Conquer it with the power of prayer and belief in Jesus Christ. And let Jesus take over. Let us reconstruct our faith every day with Jesus Christ. And I bid you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask the congregation to please stand if you are able. As we sing our closing hymn, We Walk by Faith. Right, before I let you all go, I got some important reminders. So we got flowers today are in celebration of Claude and Gwen Marsh's 50th anniversary. Aww. Flowers today are also in celebration of Ann Robar and Gary Gibson's anniversary. Woohoo! Uh, harvest of Thanksgiving, thank you. Look at the piles up here. This is great. Thank you so also much. Also at council yesterday morning, the council voted to use $1,000 from our birthday bank mm -hmm. to give to the food plaza. Thank you. Uh, joining United Women's in Faith Heavenly Holiday Craft Team, every Monday, 9.30 to noon, completed crafts due October 30th. Uh, this Tuesday, member care meeting at 5 p.m. 
All right, six-week Bible study. We are on week four. Chapter seven is our reader. And uh, yes, we are continuing our walk in Exodus. If you want to par- come and participate, still open. 9.30 uh, is the first session on Wednesday. And then, or if you can't make the 9.30, come at 6.30 p.m. It's lots of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, youth group meet, meets the second Thursday and fourth Tuesday of the month at 5 p.m. for dinner and fun. Uh, raffle baskets needed for Heavenly Holiday Fair. Uh, speak with uh, Jan Pullman or Linda Kozak. Uh, Heavenly Holiday Fair. Silent auction donations needed. Experiences. Timeshare. Tickets. Items valued over $50. Speak with Nancy Dice or Sharon Holzer Day. Okay, this is probably the most important one right here. I'm just saying. So, um, <laughs> uh, we need bakers, cinnamon roll, and candy makers needed for Heavenly Holiday Fair for uh, November 4th. Uh, sign up in the fellowship hall. Heavenly Holiday Fair. Uh, we have, uh, it's going to be on the 4th of November, which is next month, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have crafts, jewelry, candy land, raffle, uh, baskets, kids market, bake sale, and a silent auction here. So please tell your friends about it. Oh, and Laura's going to be doing the trunk or treat. <laughs> so I will love you until you submit <coughs> to my wishes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'll be watching you with the mic. Don't have a big enough mouth. Um, trunk or treat, the youth is super excited about this, but it is not going to be successful without you. Bring your car. Pick up, Jeep, golf cart, bike, I don't care. Decorate it for Halloween. Bring some candy so we can have a very successful evening. Thank you, Laura. Okay, stewardship. So we are coming to a close on our stewardship campaign. Uh, Next Sunday is Consecration Sunday. That's the time that we celebrate those of the uh, estimate of giving cards that have come in. And if you haven't gotten yours by then, you could still turn it in, but that's our goal is to have them turned in by next week. This is what they look like, and I have more out there. If you have questions, thank you so much. It is going very, very well. Look, the tree is expanding. The branches are stretching out. Thank you. Okay. Go Niners. Uh, Let me let you go. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen.